<laughs> Vanden Top from StreamYard, and uh, it's kind of nice having the founder of a platform that we are actually using at the moment, uh, which is StreamYard. Gates, thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed uh, your stream yesterday with uh, Nick and Dee. It was really, it was really fun to watch. Yeah, thank you. So um, I got to say, like the first thing that stands out uh, about this platform is how good the audio and the video is. And as um, Kevin Black mentioned in the chat, the audio, uh, I usually record the audio locally to make sure that I get a, you know, a recording that's of a certain quality. And I forgot to do that because I was blown away by oh, that's awesome. Good. That's really good to hear. Thanks. The sounded uh, yesterday and sounded in the download from from YouTube. So um, we know Facebook often degrades the audio a little bit, but I gotta say I'm kind of optimistic. Um, can you talk a little bit about why you guys are able to get such stable audio and video? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question. Um, so lots of I shouldn't say lots, but there's other services often use a third party for their video inf infrastructure, things like uh, Twilio or Talkbox or something like that. Whereas with StreamYard, we run all our own infrastructure. So uh, Dan, my co-founder and I are able to tweak all those settings and make sure they're optimal for whatever we're doing. Um, and it is a pretty unique use case. So these other services like Twilio and Talkbox, they're generally often used for making meeting applications. And in some ways this is a meeting application, but the quality going out is more important than what a meeting application would be. So we're really able to focus and make sure we tune things perfectly for what we're doing. Um, the also another uh, good differentiator for us is um, we offload as much of the computing power as possible onto our own infrastructure. So if you're on a really old laptop or a Chromebook, right. you should still have a really good experience because on our own servers, we're taking in streams and sending them off to Facebook and YouTube. So you, it requires very, very little compute power. It's nothing like OBS. Um, you don't have to have a good computer and you can still have these cool animations and whatnot um, because we're taking that, we're basically taking the load off of your shoulders. So, Yeah, so um, Facebook, YouTube, and RTMP, That's right. uh, much like Switcher Studio, that, that pretty much you have integrations with the two biggest platforms for live streaming for video, and then you can go anywhere else that can accept an RTMP uh, connection, and I, I didn't ask Mark this, but can you explain for people who might not understand basically what's involved in going live with an RTMP if they're interested in having this type of produced broadcast going to say Periscope or going to Twitch, sure, or, yeah. you know, going to some other platform we haven't even thought of at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Facebook and YouTube is our main focus. So we call right. it, we call it direct integration. We have direct integrations with Facebook and YouTube. So it's meant to be like, you don't have to know anything about live streaming, just connect your account, go live, right. you're good to know. Um, but for anyone that was more involved in live streaming in the past, you'd be familiar with what you, the, the term you used, RTMP. Um, so basically that's just a way for you to send a stream wherever you want to send it. So even though we have these nice integrations, if you wanted to, you could use this RTMP URL to send it um, without the direct integration. So this is great for like, if, if uh, you're a geek like me, maybe you want to set up your own server on like a tiny computer or something, and you can set up your own streaming server. So you don't have to be on, you can host it on your own website or any platform you want. And you just on StreamYard can put in, or on something like Switcher Studio, just put in your RTMP URL and this key, and the key makes sure that some random person can't uh, stream to it. And it basically allows you to send a stream wherever you want, wherever, any place that can accept uh, RTMP. And is there a certain um, a computing power or bandwidth that you need in order to do that? Or can most home computers and modern laptops and whatever pretty yeah. much do that? So there's the nice thing is there's uh, really good software for doing it. So you, you don't have to have much power if you have a small, it totally depends how many viewers you have, right? right? right. So if, uh, <laughs> if you've got a million people coming in, your computer is not, not going to stand up to that. But for any uh, normal sized audience, like, um, I don't want to get too technical in, into right, things, right. but if you want to just quickly spin up like a, like, like there's a provider called DigitalOcean, which I don't know how familiar people were, are with the cloud, but basically you just rent a computer on this thing called DigitalOcean. And then for five bucks a month, that server, you could probably support, I would guess 50 to a hundred, uh, viewers. And it's only costing you five bucks a month and you can, you can put that link wherever you want. Wow. 
That's nice. If you always um, upgrade the server, you get a bigger server, and now you're at a thousand people or whatever. Yeah, it is. yeah, exactly. So tell us a little bit about um, your background and how the how the company got started and kind of where you are from when you first you know went live yeah. as a beta uh, product to to here today at the beginning of 2019. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my background's in electrical engineering. Um, that's what my degree's in. But uh, I've always loved the internet. Like I've, I've always loved how it sort of connects people like before the internet you'd have like a maybe you'd have a niche interest in some in something and it'd be very hard to find other people that share that interest because maybe you're in a small town or something and with the internet you know there's these giant communities that can form around them and there's so many business opportunities around it as well so i've just always been fascinated by the internet and been interested in doing things uh with the internet and uh so i studied electrical engineering that's where i met my co-founder dan and uh, we just love building stuff together so we, we built lots of stuff that weren't related to StreamYard at all. Like we made like music visualizers, just random engineering uh, things. Um, and then we got into programming. We discovered we loved programming uh, towards the end of university and had some experience building video applications. And it eventually came to StreamYard because we thought we sort of took a look at the landscape of streaming tools and there's lots of them. Um, but I've always felt that for your typical user, you look at something like right. OBS, and it's pretty daunting. It's uh, like it's a great tool, and the, things like Wirecast, OBS, Vmix, like they're great tools. They have amazing functionality. But for your typical, like say you're a pet shop owner and you want to go live, you're going to see that OBS interface, and you're going to have in your head like, oh, this isn't for me. I can't handle this. I need a tech guy or producer. Right. And we wanted to make a product that anybody, regardless of their technical experience, can just hop on and feel like they have the tools and empowered to just go live and uh, quickly create an interesting show because you might have very interesting things to say and not the technical experience. So we want to make sure those people can still create a professional broadcast without really having any technical expertise. Right. Right. And if you don't mind me asking uh, the elephant in the room, uh, people are probably mentioning, wow, this sort of looks like be live. When I put oh, a yeah, comment yeah. on the screen, uh, actually our friend, Chris Salata, um, who mentions he is going to have to watch the replay, but great topic. I know he's got a very popular podcast called behind the ears. He live. I know I've been watching it. it. Hey, Chris, and, I appreciate uh, yeah, he's become, uh, you know, a, a passionate user of Streamyard. really likes the product. We were chatting offline about it. Um, talk a little bit about, um, both the similarities and the differences between, uh, StreamYard and be live or any of the other sure. platforms sort of, uh, not going live natively, but not producing a yeah. TV show. Right. So, so of all, yeah, absolutely. So of all the platforms out there, we are by far the most similar to be live. So you're, you're correct about that. Like there's very, there's some close similarities and the difference between so I'm going to group them like this. So there's there's things sure. like BeLive and StreamYard. There might be other ones. So far, BeLive and StreamYard are the main ones I've seen that fit this category where we're more of a streaming service rather than a streaming application. And that BeLive does this as well. They offload a lot of the computing resources that you would need to create a stream. So it allows people that are just on a laptop to make a pretty nice live stream. And I like right. BeLive. It's, it was, I, I like the concept of it. It's partly why we made StreamYard. Right. Um, things like Ecamm, uh, are great as well. And yeah. I, I should be careful how much I say in case I'm wrong about anything. But as far as I know, things like Ecamm, uh, Stage 10, uh, right. VMix, Wirecast, all that stuff's running on your own computer. So you're going to have to have a, a much nicer computer to make sure you can output a quality broadcast. Same with bandwidth. So right. we still require a decent amount of bandwidth with StreamYard, and but it's going to be lower since on our own infrastructure, we pull in these people's feeds and we're, and, and we're the ones that ultimately output it. So if you have a low, you only are responsible for your own feed going in. So you're, you, it's, it's just going to be, it's going to be a lot lighter for you when you're using something like BeLive or StreamYard. Did you want me to get it to the details of BeLive versus StreamYard or, or not It's so up much? to you. It's up to you. What are you? Okay. Um, BeLive and StreamYard are very similar. Uh, BeLive uses TalkBox for, mm -hmm. for, for doing their streams. And that was one of the main reasons why we wanted to enter the space is we don't feel like TalkBox is the best backend. Like TalkBox is awesome, but for right. it, but this is a very specific type of application. So we wanted to make a backend that was tailored perfectly to this. So that's the difference in my opinion. Now, when um, whenever you have a new platform or even platforms that have been around for a while, 
you obviously get lots of requests for new features and yeah. uh, your probably minds running through all the different things you can do, what's practical, what's not, what people are ready for. Um, yeah, as you look at, um, and one of the cool things I should say about this platform is when you're a guest, you actually see what's streaming out uh, to Facebook or to YouTube. So you get the full experience. You, you're not confused as to who's on screen or any yeah. of that kind of thing. Um, as you look at the layout now, say what I have, can you point out a couple of things that might be coming along or that you're looking and doing that would, you know, change or enhance or uh, give another option to the look in the future? Yes, definitely. So uh, we're about to release background. So where you see this black space uh, up here, right. you'll be able to upload any GIF or image you want. So if you want to have uh, leaves blown in the background or just a static nice image back there and you'll be able to change it on the fly as well So if, for a certain guest you want to have a branded background you can change it out and It can be whatever you want. Um, that'll be up soon. Uh, we're also doing a pretty big uh, UI overhaul just because we're listening to You're right that tons of feature re requests come in and right, it's right. hard to sort of filter through them But the way we our filter kind of works like our goal is to make it as easy as possible to make a professional looking live stream so when I see feature requests it's like it has to meet that criteria. Is it making the experience easier or is it making it more professional without sacrificing ease of use? And that's sort of how the filter works for what we're doing. So you're right. gonna see a pretty major UI overhaul because there's been some confusions about, uh, like, you, like you can full screen me, but that crown button is not clear to everyone how it works or how to find it. Um, so the UI is gonna change a bit. Um, other than that, our main focus right now is getting mobile ready. Uh, I can't give you a hard deadline on it, but that's our, that's our main priority is to make it so you can also use StreamYard on iOS and Android. And will that be to come in as a guest or will that be to actually host as uh... it will roll it out in parts. So we'll start with uh -huh. guests and then eventually uh, would like to have it where you can um, DJ the broadcast or start the broadcast from from the phone. Yeah, uh, Eddie Garrison says nice multiple custom backgrounds are a major upgrade to any streaming platform. He asks, um, will that include uh, will that apply to frames as well? Yes, you can already do that with frames. So uh, I don't know if you have any frames, but if you have frames, you can you can swap them out. We call them overlays, but uh, you can swap them out on the fly. So if you have a particular guest, you can click a new frame, and that will populate around. Well, it's just it's just a yeah. I can go in and show me. I can sh I can actually show your yeah, sure. built in example. Right. Um, but you could actually make that a complete frame that that yeah. sort of borders. You can, you can make, make it, it too. You can make these gifs. You can do whatever you want. It's just the only difference between backgrounds and overlays is the index, right? So backgrounds are in the back, overlays are in the front. Right, right. Um, but you have a lot of freedom with what you do. You just make the rest of it transparent, and whatever, and then what sh what isn't is what would show. Gotcha. Also, just to correct myself, I misspoke earlier when I said BeLive used it. I mix up TalkBox and Twilio sometimes. BeLive uses Twilio, not TalkBox. Oh, okay. Um, when you are um, building the, you know, you're kind of building a community as well. You've got the Facebook group. You have people, new users coming on and so forth. Talk about sort of the development uh, on that aspect and, and kind of where things are now and what, what some of those plans are going forward. Sure, it's all very new to me. I was not on, so this is the most I've ever been on social media ever with uh, StreamYard. So um, we don't, like I'm managing all the social media accounts and our approach right now is to just be very hands-on. So if someone's having an issue, we'll jump on broadcast with you, help you sort it out. And you might say that's unscalable, which it is, but right. uh, it's giving us lots of super useful information. So I'm hoping that although it's a lot of work now, we'll be able to see the common things people are running into and iron them all out so almost so a very small percentage of people ever actually need me to hop on a broadcast and help them out. And uh, it's great for community building too, because when you right. jump in a broadcast with someone, it really shows them, because I think that's sort of the essence of StreamYard. It's like this, what we're doing now is the, is the main reason why I think you'd want to use it is you want to do a stream with a couple guests, have a round table, have right. a discussion. I think that's probably the most. And you can have up to six guests. Uh, or five yourself guests. and five other guests, yeah, six right, participants. Right. Yeah. Ha have you seen anybody pushing it to that yet? Uh, the most common is two. Um, right. uh, the closest I've seen is actually when we first started. We launched in the end of September. So one of the, the first person that ever used it uh, actually, I think, got was using was had six participants on screen. But since then, I think he's actually been one <laughs> of two or three people that's ever right. done it. Two or four is much more common. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's great to have the option if you need it, but, you know, just putting six people on to put six people on doesn't necessarily make for a better sure. show a or conversation. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I thank you to uh, Eddie Garrison, who already uh, mentioned that he's going to be signing up for the free trial. You can head on over to LivestreamDeals.com. Uh, click the, uh, what is it, the big duck with the headphones on? Uh, <laughs> That's it. You could Thanks, uh, actually, I can show that. What I another feature that I really like is that um, you can actually change the logo or take the logo off altogether. If you know, let's say you're using the full screen and it's blocking something, but uh, basically that duck that you see in the upper uh, right hand corner right now, uh, click that logo on live stream deals. You can get a free trial, and the free trial right now gives you unlimited streaming, and you also get a discount. Uh, if you decide to subscribe to one of the, uh, yeah, just to clarify, it's not really a trial. It's just the free version of the of the product, so you can use it as much as you want. It's just you'll have right. our branding on there. Cool, cool. And then you get a dis. Then they get a discount as well if they when they if they decide to upgrade. They decide to upgrade. Um, uh, any um, uh, you know, we mentioned Chris Salata and Behind the Ears uh, is a is a great uh brand and and property to have as part of the Streamyard family um any other shows that have stood out to you or uh sure, yeah. you know Christian show is fantastic about- by the way I don't know what their setups are but he has amazing uh picture quality broadcasts and uh, yeah. I I've been watching it his guest I'm I'm going to miss I'm not remembering his name properly but I enjoy his guest it's uh, his uncle something but his streams are fun to watch. So if if anyone uh, out there is Uncle curious Danny about his is product, it? yeah, I think that's what it is. That might be what it is. It's a great podcast. I, I pop it. I don't usually watch the whole thing, but I'll pop in for like five to ten minutes and I enjoy them. Uh, so yeah, that one's great. Um, the I haven't spoken to him much, but there's a uh, a couple of guys from Greece that do very big live streams using Streamyard. They get about ninety concurrent wow. uh, viewers, and I think it's actually they mostly do workshops for camera setup. So that's Cool. And one of the most unique ones is actually um, someone from where I grew up, Portland, that uses it for an online exercise group, which I think is really cool. Wow. So um, in person, they've got about 10 people working out. And then they on StreamYard, they'll pull in uh, two or three remote guests that are from different states that, uh, like we are, are on screen. Right. Um, but we'll do the workout with the rest of the group and the trainers in person. So. That's the most unique one I can uh, think of. Well, I mean, congratulations on developing this great platform. Um, I've really enjoyed using it so far. And, um, you know, great video and audio quality, great customer service. Um, It's worth checking out livestreamdeals.com. 